Hi everybody, welcome. My name is Sarah Williams and I'm director of the Leventhal Center for Advanced Urbanism at MIT. If you don't know what the Leventhal Center is, it's a multidisciplinary research center of architects, urban planners, media scientists, artists, and we believe by really working interdisciplinary, we can really create innovation and create change in cities. And I am here with researchers in our lab, Anna Shumwe, uh, Adi Cooper-Schmidt, did I say your last name right? Yes. <laughs> Kelly Fang over here. These guys helped actually program, uh, design, and work on the tool. So if you have any questions, we're going to show you what Spatial Equity NYC is, how to use it. And then we have some questions for you because we want to make the tool better, improve upon it. And so one of the things we want to know is, does it help you do the work that you do? Do you see yourself using it? If not, why or why not? So that the next version can be bigger and better. So you guys all help us work on this together. But also we, we designed this tool thinking that it would be for uh, people who want to advocate for their communities. Um, and we want to just make sure that it actually meets those needs and what we could do. Better. So the first part of the worksheets asks you guys to tell us a little bit about yourself, how familiar you are with data, how you use data for work. So as we're going over the what the tool does, you guys can start filling uh, filling those forms out. So um, uh, first off, uh, Spatial Equity was built with transportation alternatives um, here in New York, and it was really a collaboration between MIT and TA. We had a lot of fun co-designing this tool together, um, and transportation alternatives really set out the agenda for what they wanted to see. Um, and Spatial Equity uses data to help understand equity issues in public space across uh, New York City. And the main purpose of the tool was can we create a mapping tool that draws together multiple data metrics available through open data and visualize that in a, a format that's easy for city councilors, public space advocates, and the public to advocate for. So when we built this tool, we really thought of three problems. While Open data might be available, not everybody have the skills to use it. So like we say data is open, but if you can't actually access it, download it, use it, you can't use it to advocate for what you need. So it's not actually open to everyone. Um, how to bring data together from multiple indicators, right? So if we have equity issues on open data, we need to have a way to synthesize them and bring them together so that people can cross-reference them. And then the other thing is, right, open data is often not aggregated within, let's say, my city council district or my community board or my state assembly district. It comes maybe at the census block or at the zip code. And so what we did is aggregate all these data into different political boundaries in order for us to really allow city councilors to kind of see how they measure up. So uh, we took data from the open data site. Um, and as you can see, open data does have a way to visualize the tool. But how do you make sense of that uh, was one of the, the issues. Uh, one of the other things that we were thinking about is how to define equity or spatial equity in relationship to this tool. And the word equity means a lot of different things for a lot of different people. And we kind of went through many cities, how they were defining it. In the case of this tool, we're looking at equity in public space. So we're focusing on equity issues that have to do with public space. And when we're using the definition public space, we're thinking about public space as also the street. And the street, uh, really, the street is probably the biggest public space that we have. So we're not just thinking about parks, we're really thinking about streets, bus lanes, roadways um, as well. So when we started this project with transportation alternatives, they gave us a list of everything they wanted on the site. And we were like, this is a lot for one tool. Let's work together to kind of pare down um, that into 15 indicators. And now we've just released the second release of this tool. So we launched last year the first release. And the second release, we added a whole bunch of indicators. So we 
decided looking at those equity indicators from other cities and New York that we are going to focus on some health indicators. Uh, so we look at asthma, noise pollution, traffic fatalities. Uh, one thing that we included in this tool that wasn't in the first one was serious traffic fatal injury, sorry, injuries. Um, and then in the environment, we look at surface temperatures, permeable surface tree canopies, park access, and then flooding risk. In terms of the mobility, we do bike, parking, bike lanes, bus speed, protected bike lanes, but this time we included sidewalk space and pedestrian plaza areas into our public space aspects. And then in the demographics, we looked at race and uh, ethnicity as well as poverty, vehicle ownership, and commute time. So I, you can see that there's a heavy focus here on equity and transportation as it relates to public space. So equity, public space, and kind of more broadly, uh, public transport. Um, so we're going to go and do a demo of the tool, but I just want to just give you, it's nice to see it before we do the demo really quickly, but one of the things that we did in the first release is, as we said, we aggregated data by city council and community boards in the first release. For the second release, we aggregated the data also by state uh, senate and state assembly districts. So you can look at any of these data sets across uh, these different uh, domains. Something else we did in the second release of the tools try to make uh, some of the graphics more interesting, compelling. So really uh, looking at these looking at the indicator, looking at where uh, you fall in the city average, and then also really looking at solutions, but highlighting them a bit with the, the colors. The other thing that we did in this second release of the tool, you guys might not have known the first release, was add more information at a zoomed in level. So you can see here that, and we've seen a lot of flooding maps today, uh, we were able to like not just have things aggregated at the city council district, but if you want to zoom in and look at your block, you can see some of those indicators at the block level. Another thing that we did in the new release of this tool is really kind of try to make, so what happens is you can see the biggest issues that your community district or your council district has. So in this um, district, like they don't have a lot of tree canopy, they have high amounts of noise pollution and high amounts of flooding. So it's picking up the three topics that this uh, uh, District 10 has to deal with the most. So the idea is if you're in District 10, you search, you can see what the issues that you want to address more quickly, clearly. And this uh, uh, was added in this release of the tool. One other really exciting thing for us data nerds that we did in this release of the tool is you know after we did beta release one transportation alternatives said hey we want to do another release of the tool well this new data set came out oh the uh, council districts they changed boundaries we want to update the tool and we're like oh wow this is going to take a lot of time to update all of this data and wow this is going to happen almost every year why don't we create a methodology and program to make it really easy for you to update? And this is something that Hannah has been working on um, really hard. Thank you, Hannah. Um, she created a process that's using uh, CoLab and using Python and CoLab accessing ArcGIS uh, tools, um, kind of uh, uh, Python tools um, and libraries. Um, and what it does is it, um, allows you to import all of these new boundaries. So if you had, let's say, a new state boundary or a borough boundary or a community boundary, you can just really just literally change that part of the code. And then it'll bring in all the data. So from the APIs, so right, like each year we have a new American community survey, we have new information on poverty level vehicles. That's all connected through API. So literally all transportation of turnitops has to do is change one line of code to change the year, and then it'll re-aggregate all of these data and all the health indicators as well, and then export the data to the site. So it's really, awesome and it, it's one of the things that I think is really great about it is that when we build civic technology we don't often think about the sustainability of the tool for the nonprofits that we're working with and what we hope by doing this in this second version 
is that the transportation alternatives does have technical skills. They don't have a lot of time. All they have to do is change a few lines of code now, and they can export that and then have a completely new version of the tool. What we hope is over the next couple of years that we'll be able to do some work that looks at indicators over time, how each uh, community district has been doing. Since we've only done this two years, we, it's not enough time to benchmark, but since they can easily update this tool every time, that benchmarking can happen. And um, I think it's uh, something we should have done in beta release one. We did it in two, um, and that's one of the things you learn. And this is just a a quick sh uh, screenshot of that uh, um, collab, and you can see um, uh, it's just bringing in a series of data, but you really just have to change one indicator for, for the year. Um, sorry, what, go ahead? No, you're like, <laughs> I'm like, this is Hannah's baby, I let her, I picked slides to show. So one of the things that um, we wanted to do is spatial equity, um, and I should stop talking. I talk too much. It's the habit of a faculty member. We, we just keep wanting, we want to keep chatting. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of equity tools that exist. So one really great example, if you have been working with equity tools before, is the EJ screen. Um, and EJ screen has like a lot of these equity indicators, but they release them at census tract level, not at these aggregated levels. So again, the thing that we were trying to differentiate with this tool is that we really wanted to um, kind of make it easier for uh, people working at community boards. So. There are solutions as data converted into information. The tool includes multiple equity metrics um, and the improve the utility by reporting data at the city council sales. So I'm gonna turn it over to Hannah who's gonna give us a quick demo of the tool. Um, and then what we're gonna do is let you guys use it for a little bit. Um, so if you have a laptop, you can also use it on your phone. Um, play, we're gonna have you guys play around with it, but let me, yeah. Uh, let him give you a quick demo of the tool and how it works. Great. Okay. So just before we send you into the depths of trying out the tool yourself, we want to at least give a little bit of an overview of like what you'll see, how to navigate it, because there's a lot there and there's kind of a, a lot to discover and explore throughout the site. And so you'll see this is kind of the splash page when we get started. You can you know, you can go in and learn a little bit more about the project, kind of a lot of that background that you just heard from Sarah. And then there's these options as well to look at either citywide data um, or community profiles. And that is basically just an option of whether you want to start by drilling into your community, say you're a community board member, for example, you might just want to go straight to your community board, type that in and like start learning about your top challenges in your community and diving into that data. Whereas, you know, if you work for the parks department, you may be more interested in looking at park access um, first and looking at that at a citywide level. You know, maybe, for example, you can look at it by borough. You know, this, you know, this, this is city council districts being ranked here. Um, and you can view this in a variety of different ways, one of which is this kind of histogram view. And this is by rank, kind of, of these districts, and you can you can click on these and like pin them um, as you go through, which is which is useful if you're trying to keep track of a couple of different districts, for example. Um, and then you can also see this in a tabular format and download this, so this is like accessible to download as you're going through, which is also a new feature of the site um, this year that you're not only able to view this data, but then if you want to go and do analysis of your own on this, you identify a pattern that's of interest to you, you can download it for yourself. And then, of course, a, a map version of uh, where you can see in what, in this case, city council districts have, you know, better or worse park access um, based on, in this case, it's like a 15 minute walking distance to a, a park. And so you can you can do this for, you know, again, you can quickly toggle over to community boards, state senate districts, state assembly districts. Um, and if you start at the citywide level, you can also uh, drill right into um, a district that you're interested in. So I guess, does anyone have a particular city council district they live in that they'd like to, that they'd like to see shown right now? Yeah. Can you show community board five? Sure. All right. 
I might go to the community profiles to do that. Yeah. All right. So this is perfect. And you we can just... also put your address if you don't know what district. Yeah. In. <laughs> All right. But she knew. You knew. Or you want to look at that district? Anyway. <laughs> Manhattan Five. In Manhattan Five. Okay. Um, all right, so looking at community <laughs> board five, um, we see that there's the top challenges that kind of pop up right away um, are very low amount tree canopy, um, low permeable surface area. In this case, permeable surface area is kind of like green streets and uh, things that the city has done like specifically on as far as like green infrastructure projects. Like this is pulling from the city's uh, green infrastructure. Um, data set and then air pollution um, so and this is this is a is a pretty interesting one um, also because it's first <laughs> in air pollution and um, 59th and tree canopy um, so you know these are like really acute problems <laughs> in, that we're seeing in, in Manhattan 5 and something that was really important to transportation alternatives and that we try to highlight in the site also is that you can pop out solutions to these various problems and that this isn't just like oh everything is going wrong in in the district where I live but also offering some like okay like, like here. So yeah, tree canopy is a problem and here are some potential ways we could tackle this. Um, and then you'll notice also that um, when you're going through this, there are you know links to go out and, and research more. You can go and sort of click on, hmm, that's a broken link. Um, you can click and compare, you know, to another district um, with city council, for example. Um, and you'll notice when we toggled over, it um, changed it to a, a, the city council district that the community board is within. Um, so it's like kind of tied to that geography. We're still in Manhattan here. It tells you your city council member, and then you can click and email them. Um, and so that's you know an aspect of like trying to move this from just pure like understanding the data into like a little bit of an action component as well. Is there a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the top challenges, mm -hmm. are those sort of dynamically ranked based on like how you are relative to other districts or cities? Yeah. Or is it more like you have set some thresholds and then those are surfaced? If they're yeah, it's a dynamic ranking. So it's, okay. yeah, it's all about like um, kind of the, there's yeah we're not setting thresholds like arbitrarily or based on any <laughs> methodology it's all based on how your district ranks in comparison to other districts um, so it's all it's relative in a lot of cases so I mean you might say you know in the case of New York City there's pretty good park access in general so like is 59 percent of people uh, being able to access a park is that bad like we're not making that judgment necessarily it's just saying like this might be a challenge is sort of flagging these top three like in comparison to other places in the city, um, this might be a, you might see this as a challenge. Um, so then I'll, I think I'll go back out to citywide data. Um, and I just do also want to highlight that we have the census data sort of uh, available in here as a comparison as well. So if we're looking, you know, for example, at traffic volume and we want to uh, do a side by side comparison of that with where vehicle ownership is. And this is like but as households without a that do not own a car. Um, so we can it's you can see that the two views are linked to each other for easy comparison. Um, we can look back and forth. And then when we roll over any of the districts, the pop-up also has information both about the traffic volume and about vehicle ownership. Um, so you can sort of track that as you move around the tool uh, as well. And you can do this with any of the census data and any of the you know, 24 indicators on the site. Um, so one more thing that I'll note is that all of this, when you go to the learn more and take action. Um, you can we have metadata about all of this data, where it comes from, links to the source of the data, um, and I'll just highlight that because um, like all of this, as Sarah mentioned at the beginning, is from open data. This is mostly from New York City Open Data Portal as well as uh, the Department of Health's Environmental Health and Data Portal, um, and so we have like and as well as the U.S. Census. And so we link back to that. You can see um, the direct data that we used. And then we also have uh, some more caveats about the different methodology we used and a, a longer 
sort of explanation of what we did to, you know, to get all of this data into the state that it is now. Um, so with that, I think I'll pause there so we have enough time to get into the data. You guys data. can start playing yeah. this. Yeah, right. So <laughs> the idea, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, no. <laughs> the idea, so again, the idea of this session is for you guys to get an opportunity to work on spatial equity and find something out on your own. So what I want each table, or you can partner up with the person next to you, or maybe three people at each table, is kind of, Try to answer a question that you're interested in in your community or on your board, either at the citywide level or at the community district level, if you want to do some kind of comparison. And then we'll be walking around to help you out uh, if you have any questions. So I think the best way to learn a tool is by like actually trying to use it. Like we always get these demos and then I never go back and never go do the demo. So you guys are going to play around with it. And then uh, what we were going to do is have you guys all, like maybe one or two of you tell us something interesting that you find. But everybody should have gotten a worksheet. Um, and what we would love you guys to do is tell us about your experience. Again, uh, this telling us about the experience is so that when we come out with beta release three, we make a much better beta release three. But again, the idea is that the audience of this tool is meant to help people that are advocating for their community to do that. So as you play around with it, think about, is this helping me advocate? What would I like more or less to advocate? And I will say that there was a huge code design process with Transportation Alternative to design this, but we need your feedback uh, to make it even better next time. So it's, it's a combination of, does this act tool actually do what you want? The other question I have is, we were thinking for when you guys report out that we might uh, record the answer so that we can hear some of your comments and questions. This is, uh, and we have a little uh, microphones for the table. Does anybody have a problem with not being, with, sorry, with being recorded for that? If you do, we can make a table of no recording, is what I was gonna say. Otherwise, we're gonna put um, these microphones on the table and that way we can just get, that way we, we're made sure to get the feedback and they'll do that as you guys play around. All right, uh, who wants to share? Yeah, it seems like you're having a lot of interesting conversations. We're very curious about them. So, who wants to share something fun you found? Something fun you didn't find? <laughs> Both, <laughs> either? Yeah. <laughs> something you wish you found but couldn't find? Yeah, go ahead. I am really interested in housing, and so I think like having more housing data mm. in here. That's true. Is that a theme? More housing data. Okay. Beta release three. <laughs> housing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think to bounce off of that, having information on like the concentration of renters from the areas mm. would be awesome. Mm. Oh, I'm really easy. Yeah. That's good. And because you're thinking like renters need more advocacy for a lot of these things if you can like kind of have that information would be helpful. Yeah. Another thing? That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I really liked how you could put two maps side by side and sort of look at it overlays between two different things. Um, I do think though like once I got like super into clicking around the variables, I didn't have to kind of like refresh and like restart at some point. Because um, you got kind of lost in there. You're like, oh my god, where am I? Okay, let's start over again. That's good. Yeah. It's good you got that deep into it. Um, other things? Things that you found? Did anybody think of something? Did anybody see how they might use it in their work? That you do? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I looked at side by side was um, uh, extreme heat and tree canopies. Mm -hmm. And so that was just a really cool example to sort of see like the direct like one to one almost sort of relationship between mm -hmm. having green spaces and a lower propensity to experience things like risk. Um, so I think being able to see something like that and you know, start thinking about what the potential policy is, mm -hmm. um, things to advocate for. Cool. So yeah, being able to see stream heat and 
uh, street canopy. And then now you could have that data and advocate for it. That's great. Yay. <laughs> Anybody else see? Yeah. yeah. I'll just share. Um, so I work for city planning, and I think having like all this data just like ready to visualize is really useful because it, does, it means that like if I want to just get a quick understanding of an issue, especially like at the community board level, I can just do that quickly without having to download the data and visualize it myself. Yeah. So I think that that will be like a, it's like a, a useful. I'm, I'm seeing it based on like my ten minutes of looking at it yeah. uh, as like a quick reference tool almost yeah. so that could can help direct me in like further research. So I think that's very useful and helpful. That's great. Yeah. yeah, because it feels like also like community. You're in city planning. You might even be able to ask a GIS person, but a community board member might not even be able to like go that far. So yeah, great. Anybody else see a way that they might use it in their work? Yeah. Well, not in my work. Ah. But as a uh, as a citizen or whatever. Yeah. At least in New York, most people will identify themselves with their neighborhood, which I don't see on this thing, but I did see in the presentation. Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That is a good question because if you go to the community profile, well, that's community board. You can actually type in your neighborhood. So like, what it weird? Flushing. Yeah. I put in flushing. Put I got in, the community board. Flushing. Oh right. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have. Oh oh. You mean like I don't get the neighborhoods. Exactly. Yeah. You that's get the community NTA codes. Yeah. Oh, right. so the NTA data is it's there. You just have to. We we don't have like a a um right now. It's not a toggle. And this was actually interesting because this came up in a, um, actually, air pollution is a bad example. Okay, Let's so do. Boundaries there, but yeah, so you can see, right. I got you. Yeah, so like when you you're, when you zoom into Queen's Community Board 7, you can then see all the underlying data for the different NTAs, which we have kind of visualized for you. But you're read that it's not it's not like explicitly there in the site. So it's like. general public. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think I think that's that's a good note for the future. I mean, that would be. I mean, we have all that data. Like we're collecting it, and it's and like think, it's I under think, there. Well, it's a, also a very interesting question because it's something we talk about in the team a lot. Like because we made, you know, city council, community board, state assembly, but then neighborhoods are highly contested. The boundaries. Understood. So I think what it wound up happening was we didn't want to get into the politics of is this. Is this my neighborhood or not? But we do know that can, we were thinking, what are the entities that can advocate for your neighborhoods that your community board could advocate? Yeah, I but, think, so yeah. yeah. Dual question of advocating to the community board and also trying to get citizens behind you. Yeah. yeah exactly. I'm looking at the, you know, that aspect of things. So like, let's put on neighborhoods. I, I, know, I, know, I, I know where I can tell my community board to go. That's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, that, that sort of benefits the comparative aspects of it. So, to, you know, at, at this stage, maybe you can do, you can compare boroughs to borough, you can compare uh, council district uh, or community board. But um, if you're, say, focusing just on the community board, to be able to compare neighborhoods within the community board. So, it's like, you know, when, Oh, the, like the neighborhoods within my community, because mm -hmm. I just for, for yeah. You know, on a community board, you know, you'll have different people, and it's not necessarily everyone's not necessarily representative. And you might have more vocal members of the community board that are really speaking up for their neighborhood. Um, and so, if if it's actually a, an accessible tool that allows uh, community board members to say like, hey, my neighborhood in this district is actually, you know, we're spending so much time talking about the parks over here, but mm. what about the parks that are not here? Uh, I think, yeah, that's a really good point. Do, somebody we haven't yeah, heard, heard from in the past. Yeah. On the topic of like neighborhoods, like it felt like, oh, I was looking at, and I know it's a bus piece, but then I'm looking that everywhere in Manhattan has like a bus speed under six miles per hour, so that felt like in terms of looking at patterns and being able to do something actionable, like having the data only aggregated at a high level and not at the lower level, yeah. You have to like pick out patterns of where is something where me as someone who's a frequent bus commuter can like ad advocate for something where like I can make a meaningful impact on that. Like it felt like sometimes having like the data only aggregated at those higher levels, like. In some of the patterns, like bike lanes, buses, especially in like when you're comparing 
Manhattan and the other boroughs, and certain patterns on the other boroughs, and it misses the pattern, and that might make it over to that. say? Oh, let's go to it. Do you know what? Maybe go to Safari. I noticed that something's wrong with my Chrome, and sometimes oh. does it. You can pick this. Saf I was just gonna. Oh, I, I installed an external plugin uh, on Friday that I noticed it doesn't like. It actually even blocks some MIT sites. <laughs> I don't know what I did. But if you okay. use Safari, I'm sorry. We should have used somebody else's computer because I have this weird problem. But um. But we do, this bus speed thing came yeah. up uh, a bit. And no, this is a good, this is helpful feedback because it was like a big conversation. Do we put it at the neighborhood or not? Because it's true, when you aggregate on these broad areas of bus speed, it does, it kind of says everybody has sick, but like it's those kind of smaller pockets of the community where you're very far away from the subway that it has that issue. Yeah. yeah. You can't tell super well on the screen. Uh, but for example, like when you zoom into bus lanes, like in the same way that when you zoom into flooding, you can see like the underlying um, 2080 high tide and um, stormwater flooding. There's also like you can you can zoom in and they're in they're kind of in dashed blue here. Um, so that you can like actually see the bus lanes themselves in addition to the aggregation, um, that was one. And we have that for a number of different. So that it helps a little bit to your question. I think I still like totally take your point that like more, I mean, everybody all like disaggregation can be really helpful in a lot of ways. And we have, we do have a lot of this data at the neighborhood tabulation area level. And like we we're just like we're, click on it. Yeah, we're, yeah. It. Like we're calculate. like, we're, I mean, on the back end, like data wise, it would be like super, simple to like incorporate that into the site so that's really great to hear that folks are thinking about that release three yeah. <laughs> uh okay yeah and then i said your hand up and then i said your hand up as well yeah okay. just on the, on yeah. the topic of sort of disaggregating by neighborhood um one thought that came to mind is we all live in um community board nine in manhattan which mm -hmm. is like columbia university at the bottom and then like those pretty far up in the harlem mm -hmm. and so i can imagine like if you're averaging that entire area like there are definitely some services that Columbia is able to advocate to get just in its surrounding area but then like don't necessarily extend all the way up to Harlem um and so like averaging that entire community board might be hiding like some patterns that are like more more broken down that makes sense I love it. Neighborhoods. Okay, you're next. Yeah, yeah I can super easy to add to that. I was thinking oh, the exact same thing because I live in the same area. Mm. Um, I, 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 I think also what could be useful is like having boundaries for neighborhoods and then giving folks the opportunity to view regular data at like smaller levels, like census tract or zip code. So like showing folks like this is for example the neighborhood of East Harlem. Um, within East Harlem, these are what sections of the neighborhood look like for different metrics. If that data is available at the census tract level, which I know yeah. in a lot of cases it is. And so yeah. Yes. Yeah. Certainly all the census data is available at the tract level. Yeah. Um and right now we're just aggregating it up from the track level. So um, yeah. I had him and then you. Oh, sorry, sorry, doing it in the order I see of hands. So, uh, just uh, oh, yeah. Just to add on to that, and then add something else, but, um, you know, if you could draw a custom boundary and mm. draw for that, and, and then you, Ooh, could, you don't have to worry about how to define a neighborhood. Someone could create their own Ooh. boundary neighborhood. But um, a visualization that I don't well, even exists because I've never seen it. But would be useful is if for the community board, if you added a, a population uh, value, mm -hmm. um, because I don't, I, it, I, I've never seen it visualize the the, the, the range in populations across mm. the community boards. And since those aren't um, required by, those aren't required to be updated by census data. I don't think they've probably changed in 50 years. Um, there's a tremendous amount of variation. Yeah. Mm. So and often the, when we're when people are saying like this community board has like the lowest amount of whatever, but it's it's also got the small population, you know. Yeah, we did normalize most of these by population. So if we're looking at um like what's a good example? Like traffic injuries, traffic fatalities, um bike racks, bike uh 
and mm -hmm. public seating, like all of that is like per 10,000 residents um, in any of like, I guess I'll just click also, on Also like when we did, um, like if yeah. you think out by uh, like where Floyd Bennett Field is, like that's actually technically in the community board, but like we removed the area of that because nobody lives on Floyd Bennett Field, even though it's included as a park. Like we don't want to like include the square footage of Floyd Bennett Field. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we did. So we did some corrections for things like that. I think. I think it would be interesting just to also like have a toggle, like you were saying, if if that, especially if that's not really well known, like the population by community board, because we, you know, we aggregated that from census data, from census tracts for all of these. Um, so so with like all of. The comparisons that we're making in the site like do take into account that like but implicitly right so like it's not like you can't go and be like oh my gosh you know brooklyn one has five thousand more people than brooklyn two like for example yeah well, two things if let me do let me echo the thing with regard to the differences in uh, neighborhoods within a community board uh let's say community board seven uh Overall, 20% uh, of the people live within uh, walking distance of the subway. 80% don't. And obviously, there are questions of who lives where and so forth and so on. And again, in terms of demographics, uh, going back to your place, be the difference, let's say, in Cambridge between uh, Harvard Square and Central Square in terms of demographics and what you would see. Uh, that's an important uh, consideration. It makes sense. I love it. Neighborhoods are a clear winner. Let's add, <laughs> yeah. Let's add yeah. neighborhoods. Let's awesome. add population. Let's add more housing. Yeah. yeah. I remember, I remember uh, police precincts. Police precincts. Oh, yeah. yeah there Does that ever come school boards, too? You know, I mean, it's like school the board districts. No offense, yeah. but the, you've got the yeah. Numbers, so there's no problem. Yeah, there's no problem. Yeah. Anyone really wants to share another source of data that they are used to, um, you know, extracting data from? And how is it relating to other sources? And what, like, your experience? Yeah. Um, two that I use frequently, frequently go to uh, is boundaries.data.nyc, which is the product of data.nyc. Yeah. And then um, uh, Crash Mapper actually. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Crash Mapper is great. We yeah we cross referenced all of our our serious injuries and fatalities data with Crash Mapper because like the gold standard for that stuff. So, yeah. Um, how do you guys use data in your work? Like, what are some of the ways that you use it in your work outside of spatial equity and I see. Nobody uses data. <laughs> I don't believe that. I guess I'm just thinking about like, um, you know, because I I used to I used to work for the city of Philadelphia, and like people used to always they were like, "You're the data person. Can you like tell me where all the green roofs should go?" And I'd be like, "What?" But uh, <laughs> but yeah yeah. I used um, public elections data um. to like. Uh, mapping of potential legislative districts. Hmm. Cool. So, like, trying to make the new districts? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That's yeah, really drawing cool. boundaries. Cool. I think Pluto a lot, which was talked about a million times today. Uh -huh. Just looking at housing characteristics, especially as it relates to stuff that we're working on, is looking at the uh, electrification of affordable housing mm. and um, mm. in our communities. So, just trying to understand cool. where are they located? What, does the, what do they look like? How many of them are there? And so on. Oh, yeah, that's how yeah, that's why like housing would be more helpful. To, like if there well, was more helpful. housing data, this would be really useful for what you do. Well, I yeah. use this all the time just because I do love this tool. Just oh, awesome! As a, reference, <laughs> as a reference tool, even if I'm not using it in my work, it doesn't always cross over. But just to like, you know, I've lived in New York City for a while now, but I don't know everywhere. So being able to just have a map and understand all of these different cat categories and statistics is extremely helpful as a reference tool. Are there any indicators that relate to the housing patterns you're seeing, or that you'd open up spatial equity to dive into, you know, to like get a get a notion of the of the district you're Yeah, I think just as a one example, I mean, we work with flooding data a lot as well, and the, and the climate space. So using that one, and really, I think hopefully, as you had mentioned as well, kind of putting maps side by side, so you can then look at where is there flooding, where is there extreme heat risk, where is there air pollution, kind of just getting a sense on this broad city level. Then again, like eventually, I'll go into the data, probably the sources themselves to get the more granular stuff, but just again to get that easy city map where I don't have to be the one that makes the map. So <laughs> it's been 
spectacular music. This is great feedback. Do we want to, so one thing we were gonna uh, do now is just like, if you guys could spend some time filling out the form so that we can like use this data um, to write up a report and then hopefully use it like next time we do uh, the beta three. But also I just wanted to let you guys know because what we wanna do is there are a lot of tools like this. I, um, I, like in various cities and we want to write about how it actually has helped people use it in their work or if it hasn't helped them how they could see it or um, any comments at all so that we can uh, write it but we gave you some guidelines and questions in the form um, but also if you guys just want to play around we'll, we'll walk around and help you guys play around but if you Help us fill out this data. Um, and then if you want to share your contact, we'll give you uh, information. As the next release comes out, we'll put you on the mailing list. Yeah. Any other, uh, anybody, any other questions? Any questions about how Hannah did all her stuff in CoLab? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anyone does want to talk about that, I can, yeah, I can share my email. And Adi is our uh, amazing uh, designer who helps us re redesign this yes. tool. So if you have any questions about <laughs> UI, UX, uh, please ask her. And Kelly did a lot of backend programming beta. What? <laughs> yeah. Any questions about programming? Yeah, just let us know. We're here. <laughs> yeah. Question with regard to split and start there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you do the correction for our uh, geographic uh, transformation? Yes. Yeah. Because so it doesn't look like right it here. Right. So this this is reprojected into WGS eighty four because that's what. Okay. But it was. No. But it was all. I saw the, the other one. Yes. Okay. Fine. Yeah. I was confused. Yeah. And yeah. Also, all of you. All of the original. We should be uh, happy. Yeah. Answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>